Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you guys how to program driver VNX3. Uh, the demonstrating host will be a MT18 VN. Let's first off talk about all of the features that driver VNX3 has and then we'll get into the details of how to program it. Things will make more sense when we're there. Uh, driver VNX3 is primarily broken up into two different type of UI, a ramping UI and a discrete UI. Uh, here it discusses how ramping UI works. Here it shows all of the shared features that Ramping UI and Discrete UI has. You can access them from on or off. Discrete UI is broken up into three different groups, A, B, and C. B being identical to Drive VNX2, if that's what you're familiar with. Here are all the groups uh, in discrete, uh, all the discrete groups that you can select. You can also, every time you see an FF, that stands for Firefly, or basically the lowest mode in the sequence, and you can adjust how dim or how bright you want your Firefly to be. You can adjust the turbo timer, the time that the light will throttle down to 50%. Uh, temperature sensor, here you adjust how hot you want the light to get. Uh, battery insert LED startup, this is a relatively new feature where uh, you can choose to have the light turn on instantly when you first in, uh, install the batteries or if you just have it if you want it off con um, as most conventional light would light locator led so that's basically the light behind the button um, some lights doesn't have it so that features might not apply overwrite number of cells detect that's not something for you to adjust so don't worry about it uh, actually don't mess with that at all uh, lockout toggles or for lights without mechanical lockout because I'll always recommend physically lock out your light by um, loosening the tail cap or disconnecting the battery if possible. However, for a light that doesn't have it and you want to keep the cells in the light for transport, you use this feature for lockout. And once you do all of your settings and you want to do config lock, that way you, you would want to do config lock. So that way you won't be able to mess with any of these, uh, accidentally changing any of these unless you really want to. Alternatively, just let me know what you want. I'll set it and then I'll config lock so that it'll be, ex it'll just be that. Okay. All righty. Let's get into it. Uh, as you can see here, all of the groups are display, uh, with four numbers, the settings. So what does this four setting means? Here's an example. It'll show uh, 8-1-3-2. Eight click will get you into config mode. Once you're in config mode, the light would do a slow blink. And then you wait a while, you click one, and then wait a while, three, and then wait a while, two. Um, I'll demonstrate. Let's see if we can toggle between ramp and discrete here. Let's see where we're at. Click to turn on, click to turn off, click to turn on, press and hold. Okay, so right now we're in the ramping feature. Okay, uh, if we toggle over to discrete by 8112, let's try that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 1, and then 1, and then 1, 2. So now we're in discrete modes, and you can see when it does the discrete, it'll do the, the triple blink discreetly. So click to turn the light on, press and hold. Okay, and now it's a discrete level. I'm not sure which group is in, we'll find out later. Let's go back to the ramping UI so I can demonstrate that. By So ramping UI would be 8111. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then 1, 1, 1. And the light will quickly ramps up and down, so indicating that you're now in ramping mode. All right, so Ramping UI is actually uh, pretty simple to operate. From off, if you click and hold, you always get the lowest level. Once the light is on, um, you click to turn on or click to turn off, obviously. And then once the light is on, you press and hold, it'll ramp down or it'll ramp, uh, it'll ramp up. At the top of the ramp, it will double blink, okay? And then it'll ramp down. It'll wait a while at the bottom of the ramp so you can catch low, and then it'll ramp back up. And then it will, every time you hit double blink, you're at turbo. That's when you know you'll let go. Uh, let's, you're in the middle, uh, middle level right now. If you turn the light off, you turn the light back on, you have last mode memory wherever you're at. So that's basically it. Um, both ramping features and discrete UI will have a bunch of shared hidden uh, modes. Let's see what they are. From on or off, if you double click, you get instant turbo. So from off, 
double click, you get instant turbo, you single click, it will take you back down to off because you access it from off. However, if you access it from on and you're at this level, you double click, you get turbo, you single click, it will bring you back down to that level. What that really does for you is if you say you're walking, you double click, scan the area, single click, brings it back down to um, the level that you intentionally had it last left it on and then another click will have it off so it's pretty good to walk the dog double click scan the area and then single click to get back to walking the dog triple click will get you strobe one two three okay uh, you probably can't see it on video but strobe is done in a way that uh, by adjusting specific durations and interval you have the light visually seem like it's constant on with uh, with the brighter blinks inserted that way your target is always lit and the blink disorient but it doesn't disorient you because you always see the target most conventional strobe will have uh, shorter duration so you always see blink they see the blink you see the blink and if you're sensitive you can be disoriented as well this way you uh, well both either way you're going to be disoriented uh, but less so because you can actually see the target and you can you know we have light constantly shedded on the target. Okay, four click will get you beacon. Let's try that. One, two, three, four. The light will be constantly on, but relatively dimly lit, and then a triple click in between. Um, you can use this in a car, uh, or uh, to be, uh, or you can just set it somewhere to be a, obviously a locator beacon. But you can, it's like a good for me at least roadside signaling. If your car breaks down, uh, stand it up. I would stand it up and uh, on the seat of your car, and then just ceiling bounce to the roof of your car. That way, you won't shine into anybody's eyes, and your entire car is just basically lit with the blinks. And that will be a good roadside signaling. And then five click will get you the voltage blink. All of the features here can be activated from on and off. I've mentioned that. Okay, so let's get into the discrete UI. Discrete UI or adjusted, um, you can see here, is broken up into three groups, A, B, and C. I would not discuss which group is good for what kind of application, only you would know for your specific needs. I would just kind of demonstrate what they do. A, B, and C. B is basically identical to VNX2. Alrighty, let's try that. Okay, let's toggle back to discrete. 8, 1, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then 1, 1, 1, 2. So right now in discrete modes, notice at the end of the discrete settings toggle, you see that it does that blink instead of the up and down ramp. And now let's set it to discrete UIA. 8, 1, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, one, two, three, and then one. So now you're in discrete UIA. From off, quick click to turn on. From on, quick click advance the sequence. So there you see, it goes up in the sequence. Anywhere in the sequence, if you press and hold, it'll bring it down a level, okay? And if you wait for five seconds, you can turn off the light with a quick click. You can, if it's under five seconds, you cannot turn off the light with a uh, with uh, a quick click. So let's see, one, two, three. It should be five seconds now. Quick click should turn off the light. That is UI A. Now let's do UI B. Discrete UI B. Eight one three two one two three four five six seven eight. One, one two three. One, two. All right, so this should be identical to driver VNX2. Let's see if that's true. From off, press and hold will get you the lowest level, just like any of this group, uh, just like the ramping UI. And then once the light is on, if you press and hold, it should go up in the sequence. And it does, if you uh, turn off the light, at any level, you turn it back on, you have that last level. So it's only press a quick click to turn on, Quick click to turn on and off, and then from on, you press and hold to go up in the sequence. Relatively simple. And that's the one I like with last mode memory. Let's try UI, uh, discrete UIC. 8133. 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then 1, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 
Okay, let's see. Quick click turns on and advances sequence. So quick click turns it on, and then every click advances the sequence, and then you press and hold to turn on, or you click and hold to turn. Uh, you can click and hold to turn on or off, but from off, quick click will always advance the sequence. So that's kind of cool. Um, last mode memorized, so no access to the lowest first level. So that's one disadvantage in this group. You won't have access to the lowest level because quick click will always gets you, let's say you're in that mid level and then you press and hold to turn the light off. If you do a quick click, it will bring you back to that level. And then uh, it's kind of simple in a way that you just quick click to go through the different levels and then press and hold to turn it off and you can turn it back on to the last level. You just won't, you just can't press and hold from off to get the lowest level. And that will be discrete UIC. All right, let's get back to the ramping UI. Uh, actually, no, um, let's go back to UI, uh, doo -doo 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 UIB. Since we're very familiar with that, it'll make most, uh, it'll be easier for the demonstration. So eight, one, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, one, two, three, and then one, two. All right, so now we should be in driver UNX2, UIB, all right? And then let's try this really fancy group here. 8126. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right now we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 constant on and then some blinks, okay? Before we had strobe, but now we don't really have strobe anymore. The reason I don't do strobe anymore is because we can have instant access to strobe. So strobe is not in the main sequence anymore. So let's see if that's true. Present. Uh, FF, 5%, 15%, 40, 70, and then you have a 2 hertz blink, and then you have a 1 hertz blink, I think. Uh, that's likely a two hertz blink and then that's a one hertz blink press and hold for the one hertz blink and then press and hold should get you the half hertz blink maybe i passed that so you have to play with it and basically it'll be a, uh, a, a fast blink a kind of medium blink and a really so slow, slow blink blinks are sometimes more useful than strobe because now you already have strobe in the instant access. Uh, you can instantly access strobe already. So you have you can control how fast or how slow you want the blink tailored to your specific needs. Let's get it down to something more simple that most people usually use. Let's try 8121. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 1, 2, and then 1. So yeah, press and hold, just two level, low, just two level, lowest mode, and then 50%. You know, for me, most of my lights, just two level. That's all I need. Simple. Click to turn off. So that's that. Mm, really simple, really. And then you do the config mode. You can adjust how dim or how bright you want the last, the first level to be. Turbo timer is really simple too. Let's say you want to set the light to turn off at one minute. You just do eight two, two, four, and the light will throttle down in one minute. Uh, temperature sensors is really cool. Okay, let's try this. Uh, activates, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, so you do eight, two, three, one. It activates the light at 50% power. Quick click in the first 10 seconds, you get 100, uh, the temperature will be set to 120 Celsius, okay? which is practically off. 120 Celsius is really hot, but it's kind of like a fail safe, right? After 10 seconds, the light will turn on to 100%, and then it will just, you just wait, you just hold the light, and you just wait until it gets really, really hot. And once it gets really hot, you click to turn the light off, and then that will be the temperature that is memorized to the light. So next time, if you have the light on, it will get to that level of hotness, it will throttle down. If you have the light mounted on a bike, or if you have active cooling over the light, it never gets to that temperature, it will never throttle down. Okay, 
And then here you have battery insert LED startup. This is kind of cool and I want to demonstrate. Right now you can see that if I take out the battery, you can hear the, the carrier is loose. And if I re-tighten the carrier, it does not, it just do a quick blink to tell you that the, the uh, battery is engaged, but it doesn't do anything else. However, if we do 8242 two here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So now what this does is set the light so that if you insert the battery initially, it should just turn on at 100%. So let's try that. So loosen the tail cap. Make sure the body of uh, the carrier is loose in there. All right, let's retighten it, everything. And the minute I retighten the carrier, oh, I actually I accidentally pressed on the button. See? The minute the battery carrier is engaged, the light is instantly turned on. So, uh, for me, I find that kind of interesting because let's say you're caving, you, you don't want to be fumbling with the button. Uh, not every light has buttons that are easily accessible. So if you just put in the battery, it turns on. So there you have instant, you have, you have instant light right away and then you can turn it on or off or do whatever, but at least light comes on right away or in a way, it's kind of like if you loaning out the light and you just want it to be dummy proof where the certain person, you have this feature activated so that a person were not sure how to turn on the light at the maximum level and they don't want to fumble with everything. They can just basically use it as a tail cap light. Just loosen the light and then turn it back on. And then there you have the lights on. And if they're not using it anymore, they just loosen the tail cap that way you can kind of rest assured that at least the light is locked out. So it will kind of work as a loaner. It's kind of a decent UI to be to loan out the light for a four. They'll use the light and then they'll just loosen the tail cap to have it off. Okay, lockout toggle mode. So 10 quick click with the 10th click and hold. It'll lock out the light and then you can't do anything about it. Let's try that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you hold the light. Oh, sorry, I did not. I did not uh, retighten the the uh, tail cap. So let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oops, I think I'm. I was supposed to hold the tenth. <laughs> oh, I locked it out anyways. All right, so now you can see it does not work. Uh, let's see if we take out the battery and put it back in, see if that resets it. Oh, and it does. So you can easily reset the lockout features by taking the battery out and putting it back in. Or if you do the 10 click and then hold on the 10th, it will do the same thing. Uh, 16th uh, config lock, I've already talked about this. You do 16th click and on the 16th, you hold down the button, you'll do certain blinks. And then that's it. You can't adjust any of these stuff until you do that 16 click again. And what are the chances that you accidentally click the light 16 times? All right, so that is as brief as I can make this. Um, really, it seems complicated. It's not, it's not at all. And the user interface for me is very intuitive. You really just gotta get this get a light in front of you, sit here, play with everything. You will love it. Once you get to tailor everything to your need, you just love this firmware. And it's really not that hard. Just follow the video one time and it should be relatively simple. All right. Uh, I promise you're going to like Drive X3 because I love it. It doesn't have anything I, uh, I'm looking for anymore. I, everything that I need is here, at least for now until technology go crazy. All right. Woo. That was a lot harder than I thought, but it flows. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.